Hello, my name is Lenny Yen, and my brief presentation is about the evolution of viruses. Today I will be discussing whether viruses are alive or not, and how that shapes their origins. I will also be discussing why there are plenty of different strands of the influenza virus each year, and I will also go into why viruses just outpace every other organism evolutionary-wise. So are viruses alive? And the answer is yes and no. For example, they can reproduce, obviously, since when a sick person affects another person through sneezing, that victim will get sick a few days later, showing that viruses can spread and reproduce. But however, they cannot metabolize, meaning that they cannot generate ATP on their own, which is a living trait. And determining whether viruses are alive or not can determine a suffice answer about where they originate, where did they first arrive. And there are three widely known hypotheses that suggest their own interpretation on how viruses first arose. Progressive, regressive, and the virus first. The progressive hypothesis suggests that viruses arose from genetic elements that gained the ability to move between cells. Mobile genetic information, pieces of genetic material capable of moving within a genome, gained the ability to exit one cell and enter another. A good example of that are retroviruses like HIV, but I'll go more into that later. The regressive or reduction hypothesis suggests that there are remnants of cellular organisms, and they somehow have evolved from more complex possibly free-living organisms that lost genetic information over time as they adopt a parasitic approach to replication, similar to bacteria and how the chlamydia bacterium evolved from free-living ancestors. And finally, the virus-first hypothesis, which suggests that viruses predate or co-evolve with their current cellular host. Unlike the other two hypotheses, virus-first suggests that viruses came before cells and that evidence is in the RNA of the virus, which where many scientists agree that very first replicating molecule was RNA, not DNA, which gives support that viruses came before cells who have DNA, although viruses contain both RNA and DNA separately. Now these are just hypotheses of how viruses came to be and neither of them are right or wrong, but what does this tell about viruses and how they evolve quickly? Well, they enter in and out of cells, such as the progressive hypothesis stated. But how does this help virus evolve? Well, the answer is much like cells. Viruses go through a process of natural selection. Assuming we know what natural selection is, for example, such as survival of the fittest and the stronger viruses passes its genetic information along its offspring. We know that for natural selection to occur, we need genetic variation in which there are some genetic heritable differences in a population and in viruses, variations come from two main sources, mutation and recombination. Firstly, mutation, which is seen through all walks of life, is where a mistake happens when genetic material is altered. Recombination happens when two viruses have infected the same cell at the same time. Virus parts from both viruses would flow around in the cell at once, and those virus parts can intermingle by physically breaking and reconnecting the DNA or RNA in their of their genomes or they can go through a process called reassortment where different segments kind of like tiny chromosomes can swap some of those segments an example of recombination would be influenza as shown here a human influenza virus and a bird influenza virus goes through a pig cell why pig cells well because they're known as mixing vents vessels for the influenza and here we see that viruses went through reassortment to create a new virus with both genetic information from both participants. So why is this all necessary for evol to the evolution of viruses? Why are influenza strains changing every year? Well, that's because viruses evolve from very rapidly because they reproduce very rapidly, leading to mutations and recombinations at an alarming rate. For example, HIV, which is an RNA virus, meaning that it reproduces faster than that of DNA virus, mutates very, very fast causing increased genetic variation, making it harder to get rid of HIV and harder to make drugs to stop HIV. Now before I go, I would like to mention a recent virus known as the Mimi virus. And why is it called a Mimi virus? Well, it's because it mimics bacteria. Now this virus in particular is most likely evolved from other viruses. It's three times longer than regular viruses and it contains both RNA and DNA. This virus really de redefines what a virus is since it has both life and non-life like qualities. Well, that's the evolution of viruses and I hope that's helpful.